Experiences remembered. We departed from JFK Airport at night via Braniff Airlines. Following a stopover in Lima, we arrived in La Paz early the next morning. Dr. St. John and Cat and Ed Barnett greeted us at the airport in El Alto. The air was thin and took some getting used to. In fact, we were told the air was so thin, it wasn't necessary for La Paz to have a fire department. Smokers in our group had to work really hard to inhale and keep a cigarette going. Headache and fatigue due to the high altitude, seroche, could be relieved, we learned, by mate de coca or two aspirins followed by a good nap. Upon arriving in the tarmac, we filed out of the Braniff airplane and walked towards the customs. After passing through customs, we boarded Peace Corps vehicles and caravaned our way off the Altiplano, winding our way down and around into the basin that is La Paz. Meeting with the U.S. Ambassador at his residence, reportedly the only residence in La Paz with central heating, was a key activity in our orientation. Full attendance fell short due to the disabling effects of Soroche and the purple burps. Those foul-smelling vapors, think rotten eggs, that escape from one's gut without warning. Hotel Torino was the designated Peace Corps hotel in the Paz. Groups such as ours began their in-country experience here, and current volunteers could meet up with each other on paydays every two months. The Torino was a chunky, two- or three-story stucco building on a street running perpendicular to the Plaza Murillo. The street was steep and paved with thick, cobbled stones. Great wooden doors provided entry to the hotel from the sidewalk. At least one door remained open during the day. At night, after 11 p.m., both doors were closed and admission granted by special permission. For this purpose, a night watchman slept on rock slabs that made up the floor just inside the entrance doors. Rooms at the Torino were large with high ceilings. Three of us shared a room. We weren't long in Bolivia before many of us came to realize the Torino assigned guests based on bed availability alone. 
One could go to bed at night and wake up in the morning with a stranger sleeping one bed over. I remember once being awakened in the middle of the night by the rustle of a nun preparing for bed. Because the Torino had no heat, it was freezing cold at night. The weight of the bedding made it almost impossible to turn over or under the covers. The sheets were of thick cotton, the multiple blankets of heavy wool. Mornings were marked by Torino staff entering the room to unfurl the Bolivian flag from the French doors that opened onto the street. Down the hall were the showers. A couple of unheated, dry tiled rooms with cold water dripping from polluted shower heads. After turning on the water, one had to step back to throw an electric switch that connected to the water heater. The exposed wiring required extra caution to avoid self electrocution. <laughs> At the center of the Torino was an open-air courtyard. The layout seemed to work well for the hotel. Ditto for the roller skating rink and brothel, business ventures from the Torino's past. In the courtyard, there were a few tables with men playing cacho and drinking beer. Another few tables provided dining service. Included on each of these tabletops was a ketchup bottle, and next to it, the ever-present triangles of thin paper that served as napkins. It was from the Torino's menu that many of us first tasted Bolivian specialties of Lomo Montado and Chicharron. The menu also offered hamburgueses and papas fritas. Added to every bill was a usage fee for whatever ketchup was consumed. The Barrio experience was another key event in our orientation. Peace Corps vans deposited us in small groups at destinations on the road leading from the Peace Corps office to El Alto. Among our assignments were to survive and at the same time meet and greet the locals. <laughs> For two or three days we had to practice survival skills, get to know a community and secure alojamiento on our own. My group ended up sleeping on the dirt floor of an empty, musty tienda. In the daylight, we saw the remnants of faded crepe paper streamers, red, green, and yellow, dangling from the ceiling and walls. So not in sync with what we were busy about. Night came too soon, and morning not soon enough. I drank a lot of orange fruit and ate a lot of animal crackers. <laughs> 